Hey guys, this is Ryan from A Monolith. You're listening to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience Podcast. And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. This is your host, Chris. We got Jesse. What's up, man? How you doing? Yo, what's up, guys? How's it going? And on episode 48 of the podcast, we have a very special guest. You might know him from his time in Devin Townsend Project or in a monolith. We have Ryan Van Poot Ryan. What's up, man? How you doing? Doing good and nice job on pronouncing the name, man. That gets messed up all the time. <laughs> yeah, nice someone work. with a long name too, man. I, I know how it feels. I mean, yours is a little more complicated than mine. You said it was Dutch last time, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sick, dude, sick. But it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, last time we talked about your debut album, and now we get to talk about a brand new EP you're putting out right now, Progressions. Uh, how excited are you uh, for you for this new release? Very excited. It's, uh, as you know, been quite the challenging uh, year, past year and a bit, right? And, um, you know, to, to put out some new music and uh, to keep all of our followers happy and, and just show how we progress as a band is uh, exciting for us. So, you know, we just dropped our first single, Angelville, and uh, people are loving it. It's going great. And uh, can't wait to drop uh, some more stuff for you guys soon. Yeah, dude, the video was pretty sick. Uh, can you like dive into how that, how long it took to make it, and like what, it, what the process that went into it? Yeah, the is a lyric video. So like uh, the guy who did the, all of our videos, actually, Dave Benedict is his name uh, for Square Egg Productions. He lives here in uh, Lower Mainland in Vancouver, and uh, we just uh, contact him and say we want to do something a little bit different. You know, and uh, want to do a lyric video, but we want to combine having John in there, you know, uh, presenting, you know, like the, the Angel Bell concept behind the song and everything. So we came up with these ideas of mixing this rad artwork that we had done by our artist, Dane Hallett. He's a guy from Australia, works on big movies and stuff for CGI and all that stuff, artwork. And uh, he came up with them. We're like, we got to utilize this awesome artwork. So let's have it somewhat animated and mixing John, you know, screaming his face off for this song. And, uh, and he came up with that concept and uh, yeah, it's awesome, man. We're super stoked on the video. It turned out really well. Yeah, like you said, the artwork is sick, and it, it kind of speaks for itself, too. Like, just looking at it, you, there's so many different parts of it. You're looking at it, looking at this, and uh, I think it really, really worked out well. I'm kind of excited to see how the other songs correlate to the album art as well. Like, it's all connected, right? It's all, like, a overall theme and everything. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, you're going to see some things. I can't necessarily give it all away, right? But uh, you are going to see some themes uh, coming out, which are, and we're going to announce the plan on how we're releasing the EP and stuff. We're doing things a little bit differently uh, just because we have a, a cool idea of how we want to present this to everyone. And, um, you know, we want it to lead up to touring and all that stuff as well. So there's, put it this way, there's going to be lots of artwork. There's going to be lots of cool things coming out with this EP release for sure. Yeah, actually, I was really curious about the EP because, you know, State of Being came out basically when COVID was hitting and you didn't really yeah. get to tour. I don't know how much touring you ever really got to do. Maybe you got to play the songs before the album came out. But did that influence you guys creating an EP? Because relatively, it's a year, basically. You've released a new song a little bit a little bit more than a year. So that's pretty quick turnaround, especially. But do you want to, Is it about keeping busy or were you going to do this regardless of not being able to tour on these songs, you think? Yeah, we, we did this to, to stay relevant, to be honest. We're a brand new band. You know, I know it's made up of members, Devin Towns, Project Threat Signal, Methods Mayhem, whatever. You know, it's like, sure, we have all that going for us, but we're, it doesn't take away the fact that we're a brand spanking new band. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we wanted to stay in the spotlight, if you will, or, or just keep our relevance up there and... and let everyone know that you know COVID didn't destroy us as a band it hurt us big time you know our album came out march 27th our tour in europe and uk our headlining tour was supposed to start march 27th 
you know, geez. and we had to cancel it literally 10 days before we were leaving. We almost were on that plane, you know, to go over there. And that would have been bad, you know. So luck, luck, luckily we uh, managed to, to avoid that nightmare altogether. But the nightmare that pursued after that was COVID, you know, yeah. and uh, it destroyed everything that we did three months of PR, interviews, radio, all that stuff. It just just all disappear because what can you do you can't tour you can't do anything so we haven't even supported our debut album <laughs> yeah, in a live scenario geez. yet so um you know after a year there's only so much you can do with that album after you did three months of prepping it uh, pr for it and everything else there's not really much else you can do after that so we thought the best thing to do is let's let's give them more material we were inspired, we are influenced by everything that went on. And um, we progressed as a band, naturally, you know. And I think you can hear that. You listen to State of Being, I'm very, very proud of that record, as is everyone. But uh, when you listen to Angevel, it's a little more progressive musically. It's, it's, you know, I think it's matured in a way, too. Not that there's nothing not mature about State of Being, but we progressed. That's why the album is called Progressions. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. going through going through the stuff that everyone went through with COVID, uh, progressing as a band, progressing musically. We just want to show people how we're progressing. And that's why we decided to do the EP, to keep us out there, to let people know we're still here and that we still plan on uh, kicking some ass on the road and getting out there as soon as we possibly can. Awesome. Was there any ideas? Because a lot of bands, especially like the idea of keeping busy and especially keeping their name out there, like a, 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 another Canadian band, Spirit Box, they grew a lot during COVID doing this because they released a lot of singles. You know, they finally yeah. announced their album, but literally they were just releasing a single every two months and an amazing video behind it. Was there any ideas of maybe yeah. just releasing these as singles and doing that? Or was it just kind of like, let's write. And then you guys came up with these songs like, let's get this out there as fast as possible. Okay, so the idea, and, and we are going to be saying this on our, our social media, but you know what? The teddy bear, metal teddy bear experience <laughs> gets the, the first dibs on this. Let's put it that way. But uh, the whole, the plan from the beginning was to do a five-song EP and uh, release singles every two months for the next, uh, for four songs. Oh, nice. So we're just going to keep on releasing stuff. Then at the very end to get, you know, it, it's like we're going to release the entire EP, including the fifth song that you can hear, you know, and there'll be artwork for that and everything. And, you know, each, uh, each single is going to have its own artwork. There's going to be a whole bunch of stuff behind it that we're going to be doing. Wow, that's but, awesome. uh, you know, we just want to keep people uh, interested, give them something to listen to up until we tour. So instead of just dropping a five song EP right now, which we could do, yeah. but then you know what? It's like not, not everything's going to really get heard either. You know what it's yeah. like these days, just yeah. lots of short attention span, right? But if we're releasing a song every couple months and just keeping people, uh, you know, interested with new music, by the time that EP comes out, we're going to be touring and then we can play it live and, everyone's going to know what we're about, where the new sounds progressing and all that stuff. So I think it's just a win-win situation with what we're facing right now with the whole pandemic. Absolutely. It's also a good idea because like other bands have also done that like kind of style of release with like Acacia Strain. If you listen to the podcast, I, I, really talked about that the way they did that like yeah. it was like five they spelled out their album with ep after ep of two songs basically making up the entire album eventually and i really love that idea now hearing you say that i really think that's an amazing idea especially with the spotify and the apple music where maybe people love state of being but there's all this music coming out and now a song brings you back to the page where i only got one song this new song is awesome oh i want to listen to more now i'm going to hit state of being again now i got two songs and then you kind of keep falling back down, too. Because also, usually when you listen to one song, it just starts the radio for the band. And it's just like, yeah. to me, I'm not in a band, so I can't really say what I know about the business. But as a listener and a huge music fan, it's it's really smart. So I'm really happy to hear it, especially for such a great band. You, you know, get more people and more ears on your music. Yeah, no, it's very well said, man. I, I agree 100% with everything. And, uh, you know, I, I think um, in this day and age, you have to – keep people's attention you yeah. know and and uh again 
you know, the, the attention spans become a lot less because there's so much out there. And now that everything's streamed, you have YouTube, you got all these social media outlets, um, you know, Instagram's huge with reels and all this stuff. It's like, it's endless, man. <laughs> so what's it always come back to? It comes back to the music though. Yeah. So if, if you can just release new songs that you feel you're putting your best foot forward with, um, I think it's a great way to keep that interaction with everyone who's following you and uh, give them new stuff to listen to until you can get out there and actually tour it and support it. Absolutely. It's a great idea. So, but yeah. And uh, I'm very excited too, because obviously new, you know, new music from monolith is great. <laughs> I was like, I listened to like over, I listened to the album over and over again, preparing. And I was like, Man, this is bangers. It's like, I like that. <laughs> like, let's get another. more. Yeah. One after the other. Let's get it. Now, do you and, ever listen to like the analytics of it? Like, I know like, uh, usually that's a label thing or magic kind of thing, but do you ever look at the analytics of like how your tracks are doing, which ones get the most plays, which one you think? Yeah. Like, Cause like, I know like some bands use that to make set lists and stuff like that when they play live. Yeah, they do for us that the whole set list honestly is what we feel makes a great live show. So we aren't going to, you know, will we put our best song and open with it? No, no one's going to do that. You know, <laughs> but like, you know, would we be scared to put a song like Hollow, which did well for us, Instinct did well for us, Dig did really well for us. You know, are we going to start the set off with those songs? No. You know, but would we maybe put one of those songs, two or three songs in? Sure, why not? You know, it's like if, if, it, if there's peaks and valleys in your set and it makes – for a really, really good concert, that's how we're going to do it. So we don't really let the analytics decide like our set list or anything, but do we pay attention to them? Of course, we want to know what songs, you know, people are listening to. And, and yeah, will they to a degree be strategically placed in your set? Yes, they will be. Like I said, we're not going to throw them all at the front, you know? And, <laughs> we hate uh, this town. We're going to play all the songs you hate. All songs <laughs> right? <laughs> totally. Totally, man. So... So yeah, it's like in, in that sense, you know, we, we let the analytics come into play somewhat, but for the most part, and this is how we all view our music too. It's just like, what, what's the honest approach to this? What, what's feels best go with your gut, have your yeah. intuition of what you think is going to be the most banging show you can put together for the people who are paying good money to come on and see you. You know, that's, that's what we wanted. We want people walking away going, a monolith rules live. They were amazing. That was awesome. The set list was great. Uh, There's killer energy throughout the show. That's the other thing too. It's like when you're doing 30, 35 dates on a tour or something, you don't want to burn yourself out. So you got to be careful about where you put yeah. certain songs in the set list. And especially for a singer, John, you know, it's like, he's, he's an incredible vocalist, but man, he, he's hitting some high stuff in different songs and there's some pretty crazy screaming. It's like, you know, even said when we come up with the set, you know, I, I got to make sure I'm not putting too much difficult stuff all together or I can really burn out my voice on the tour, right? So we got to keep these things in mind. So that comes into play as well. So there's different factors that help us decide how a set list is going to go or what it's going to sound like. Is there any like pre-show rituals that you guys like do all the time to prepare yourself for a <laughs> show? Like maybe John won't talk to like press or anything like that or you won't talk an hour before the show or anything like you like you won't go walking around the town or anything like that it's funny i wish i could answer that question but we haven't toured so you know it's <laughs> like our literally our first tour was march 27 2020 and that got yeah. taken away from us we did a three three day west coast swing of bc and that um that was like uh, Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton. And uh, that was cool. And, you know, what, what we did before shows, we just chill out in the dressing room. And, uh, you know, there was no rituals or anything. I, I also think you need to kind of go through a tour for that to develop. It's like that's how it was with DTP or Devin Townsend Band, you know, or Devin Townsend Project. Is like when we first started touring together, it's like there were not really any pre-ritual, uh, pre-gig ritual things or anything. But, you know maybe three quarters of the way through the, or halfway through the first tour, you know, we get together and, you know, whatever we, the big thing was punch and fist, you know, it's like, have a good show, man. You know, we start doing that. You know, I remember at the end, whenever Devin 
uh, would go out and do encores for like our transcendence tour, which was the last tour we did. Um, you'd always do EA, the song EA is a, as um, the first song to come out for the encore set. And uh, so Dave, Beef, and uh, Mike and I, we'd just go backstage and we'd crack beers. And that was our thing. <laughs> okay, we're having a beer, you know, and we just drink beer and and uh, watch them do EI. And, you know, we never did that before because I'm not a big fan of, of drinking while I'm drumming or anything because I always want to put on the best show possible for yeah. the money that people are paying to see me. I don't want to go up there buzzed, never yeah. mind drunk, you know, and, and play like crap, right? So, um, you know, but that that was whatever, you know, you're – one beer is not going to do anything and you go out there, you're celebrating. It was a cool thing. So like we, we have to wait for a bit, get out on tour and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and then uh, to be continued, I'll let you know what rituals we come up with. <laughs> nice, man. Nice. I mean, just speaking about like the Devin Townsend band that you guys and project and all that, was there always just like a fun dynamic just every day being together? Like, it just sounds like so much fun. Like just knowing the guys too, knowing Devin, how he's always joking around. Like was every day just fun on tour? Yeah. You know what? Uh, I believe you, it's, it's not necessarily the people around you. It's yourself. It's like you make the tour fun. Because there's people who go on tour are miserable. They miss their family or the, this or that. But, you know, everyone in the DTP was pretty positive, right? And I'm a very positive person myself. So even if other people are having a bad day, I'd still make the day awesome. You know what I mean? And I'd, I'd still find ways to, to have fun on the road. But um, for the most part, like I said, everyone's positive. Everyone's funny. Devin's one of the funniest people I've ever met. And uh, there were always jokes. There was always hilarious sense of humor running around you know the tour bus or backstage at all times so you know tons of funny pranks here and there and it was always a good time you know and i think i think you could uh see that it was pretty obvious just you get interviews with devin get interviews with me or anyone else it's like we're all about having fun you even watch some of the behind behind the scenes video it's like there's always jokes or, or laughing going on somewhere you know, in there. So yeah, it was, it was always a good time, but in the end for me, it's like, I made every day awesome anyways. You know, it's like, <laughs> if, if, if people were going to be in bad moods, they can be in their bad moods. I'll just go to the other side of the bus and make some fun over there. You know, it's like, and there's nothing wrong with that. We all go through it. Right. But that's yeah. just the way I approached it. Well, that, last time you were on the show, you told me, um, you shared a story about a prank where they put glitter all over your set. And when you played it, yeah. you're like covering stuff. Is there like another uh, prank story that you'd like to share? Uh, the first tour I ever did was with Strapping and Loud, Devin Townsend Band, and Zimmer's Hole. And uh, it's hilarious. There's, I don't know if you guys have heard of the term bunk sock, but uh, it's, it's not a great term. I can't go into too much great <laughs> detail, but they use the socks for something. So you can use your oh, imagination. Okay. Nice. But, yeah. but anyways, um, <laughs> hot <laughs> uh, yeah, so usually i was hoping to god it's dirty laundry but i was playing uh, the song bad devil and uh it was the encore and it was the very last show of the tour and that's when the pranks always come out the very last show of the tour and uh yes yeah, steve wheeler the drummer of zimmer's hole and i think it was val from zimmer's hole as well they came out and they collected everyone's socks from the tour bus, you know, that were dirty or in the laundry that was supposed to go out or whatever. And while I was playing on stage in front of like, there was probably like 1500 people there or something. They just start dumping bunk socks <laughs> all over me in my drum ah. kit. I'm drumming, they're like hitting the sticks and I'm like missing cymbals and there's just socks flying everywhere. I hit a drum, a sock goes flying, dropped it on my head, dude. I was just like, you got to be kidding. Because what are you going to do? Stop? You can't stop. And they knew that. So oh. I just powered through that song. It was brutal. It's Dude, like, that smelled awesome. I'm just praying to God they were just <laughs> dirty socks. Yeah. Really, you know? <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. So so that was, that was a pretty good, uh, that was a pretty good prank to pull. You know, your this first is... tour ever. And uh, that's the prank that gets thrown on you. It's a pretty good one. <laughs> so, how was your tour? I got, uh, 
covered in socks. Use socks. It was awesome. <laughs> Half the people are runners too. So think about that. <laughs> exactly. you know, oh, it's, it's funny too because I was drumming and I, was, I remember I looked at it, Tom, like, hey, that's my sock. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> the hell? <laughs> Why are you here? How did they find it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're my lucky sock. Well, going yeah, back yeah. to the EP progressions, uh, last last album, your debut record, you guys had your brother help you out on this. Jay, was he uh, helping you out on this one as well? You bet, man. He's part of the team. Uh, you listen to Song Angel, you hear the production. It's it's unbelievable. It's huge, right? Like it just sounds incredible. And he knows us, and he knows how to produce us. You know, it's like uh, he's just become like the fifth Beatle. You know, it's like. <laughs> So a he's a sixth, a monolith guy, you know, and, and <laughs> he just understands us. He understands the music. He knows what we're going for and he pushes us. It's, it's not necessarily easy in the studio with Jay, you know, because he's always going for the best performance, you know, uh, trying different things to see if it works better this way or that way. It's not just record the demo and let's move on to the next song. You know, things change as you go along. You get ideas when you're in mixing, even, you know, he'll be, hey, what do you guys think about putting a sub drop here? Because I think this would help impact the song more. And, you know, it, it, it does. You know what I mean? So to have that extra mind to think of the things and to think outside of the box uh, and bring it into the music, it's a great thing to have. And, and Jay compliments us that way every time. So, yeah, we brought him in again. And you know what? We do another album. He'll be there. You know, he's just, Does he hit you up. He's like, when's the next album? What's the next EP? When are we doing this? I oh, know he's, <laughs> he's so busy, man. It's like a lot of the times it's like, do you have time to do anything for us? You know, it's like, <laughs> he's, he's done a lot of real big acts. He just finished like the new simple plan record. He's Damn, worked nice. with, you know, he worked with Chris Cornell. He worked with uh, Nickelback. He did one of their records. He's done like endless A-list people. Daughtry, you know, like just tons of, of bands. Killing so, uh, yeah, he's he's killing it. He's a super busy guy. Does he have his own band by any chance or is he just no. all production? <laughs> he, used, he used to play bass and uh, he used to play bass and him and I playing in a uh, band called June way back in the day. This is like 25, 27 years ago. And uh that was the last thing they ever did. And then he went into production. He actually started doing production while he was in that band, but then he just got way more into engineering, producing and mixing than he did uh, playing. And uh, he just took his career there and he's extremely successful with it. I would have liked you to say when he said, uh, was he in a band? He's like, nah, he actually hates music. He just like does it because <laughs> he's good at it. It's weird. <laughs> he doesn't actually listen to any music. He's just really good for some reason. <laughs> yeah, right? No. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he's, um, yeah, he's, he's super talented, man. I just can't really put it into words. It's like, he, he blows my mind every time that I record with him. You know, I just finished recording a, an album. Cause a lot of the time when I get session work, uh, it's either me bringing him into the fold or if he has a session and needs a drummer, it's him bringing me into the fold. Damn, so we're always awesome. working with each other. Right. The team. And we just, we just recorded this band, Billy Butcher, and they're in Vancouver, and uh, they're like kind of an ACDC vibe, you know, just straight up four on the floor. Like my kit was my kick drum, to rack tom, floor tom, snare, crash, crash, ride, oh, three crashes, ride, hi hats. That's it, you know, like <laughs> simple kit, but man, sounded like a million bucks, you know, and he killed it. So we're working on various genres of music and you know, always pulling each other into each other's sessions too. So it's, it's really cool to work with him. He knows me so well, you know, not only are we brothers, but you know, it's like, he just knows how to get the best drum sounds from me, you know, and awesome, he man. knows how I hit, he knows how I play, how consistent I am. All that plays into his consistency and vice versa. Right. So it's a, it's a really cool relationship we have as family, but also as uh, professionals in the music industry. That's awesome to hear. I will say the bands you listed there, like you, I would say like a monolith's like, like a harder rock, definitely in the metal, you know, verge on progressive. You guys are very interesting sounds, you know, a little bit like you're in this like kind of middle space. You can kind of go either way if you really wanted to. 
I feel like yeah. the bands you said he recorded, do you feel like he brings a very fresh eye to it? Because he's not like a traditional metal producer. He's not a, like a progress. He doesn't. So like he comes in and he's giving you this top level hard rock rock production, possibly pop, like kind of those ideas into this metal, like kind of progressive sound. Very interesting. Would you say yeah. that's where like the sound kind of comes from? Yep. Yeah, I, I would say so. He's just, he's, he doesn't put all of his eggs in one basket. He listens yeah. to everything. You know, he's open to everything, just like I am. My favorite band is the Beatles. Nice. People are waiting to hear me <laughs> say it's Pantera or something. Pantera is my second favorite band. You know, but, like, <laughs> but like the Beatles are, are what I grew up on. I love the Beatles. You know, there's attachment in my heart to that band, you know, and, and like Jay's the same way. He'll listen to anything. And he's open to recording, mixing, and producing anything. You know, yeah, he's, he's very cool. musical. It's not about a genre for him. It's not about a genre for me. We're both about music. What's best for the song? That's yeah. all that we really care about. You know, and some people even have listened to my drumming on State of Being, and they're like, you know, uh, oh, you know, it's not as crazy as what uh, it was in Devin Townsend Project, you know, and and some songs are the rain's a pretty pretty fun song to play you know for gone has some really cool chops in it there's different songs where I, I get to throw some stuff but then there's really simple songs breeds persevere you know those those aren't challenging at all even you know like uh the morning is pretty straight up tune you know but it doesn't matter because the drums are doing what they're supposed to do for that song and that's all that i truly care my about. man I, I put there's no ego here, man. It, it has nothing to do with me being flashy or whatever. I want people, you know what? I could care less if people comment about the drums. I, j I want them to comment about the song. That's what I care about, you know? So um, that's a big thing with me. You know, it's like uh, we, we, we definitely could err on the edge of rock songs. Like we got played on rock radio with Hollow on Times of yeah. Stage. You know, but Angel for example, they wouldn't get played. That song wouldn't get played on those stations, you know, but uh, it just goes to show that we're not a one trick pony. We kind of, we, we have our different influences and we're going to, we're going to do what we feel, you know? Yeah. And, and I think you're going to hear that in, in the EP. There's some surprises in the EP, some definite surprises. You I know, think that's going to help with like shows and yeah. stuff like that too, with like other bills and like getting you on shows. Cause you can play with like, you know, like those um, not so heavy bands or whatever, like rock bands more oriented, or you can play like the heavy guys too. Like you guys fit both. You know what? It's like we could go out and, and do a tour with Alter Bridge if we wanted. You know, but at the same time, sick. we could open we could open for our brothers in uh, Gojira. You know <laughs> what I mean? So it's like exactly we could do either of those bills. You know, and it, and it would work. So yeah, I forgot who brought it up. I was listening to a podcast, and the guitarist of Seven Dust was there for a solo project, and he brought up because Seven Dust pretty heavy band like they got very thick sound but they also have a lot of calmer songs and they and they play a lot on rock radio and they got to open for uh creed and when i heard that i didn't know that like back in the day and i'm like like yeah like when heavier bands they got a little bit of that other side and they kind of go through genres you're able to open for bands that are big as creed which like as a metal kid like if my favorite metal band opened for creed like i'm not the biggest creed fan but i'm like holy crap like that's not just playing a small club. You're playing arenas. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> God damn. Yeah. And, it, you know, and well, you know, it's very interesting, too, because also that's one thing I hate about metal. I think that people like a lot of like, like kind of like the aggro metal fans are always focused on the very technical. Like you said, like, oh, your drumming's not as crazy as it was on the Devin Townsend stuff, which is like, so it's just like you know some of the most technical bands will never that are way more technical than metallica will never make a song as good as master of puppets but they yep. can play every they're all way better at their instrument than everyone in metallica it's just like so what does that mean say that like you know? <laughs> you know it's it's weird man it's like i remember growing up you know and it wasn't about that it, it really was about writing cool songs and not being so technical and stuff but then mid 90s you know, a <laughs> band who does it well and a band who I think really brought technical playing to the forefront of metal is, and they're good friends of mine, Miss Sugar, came along and just messed everyone up. Like, <laughs> what the hell are they doing? 
you know, and I'll never forget when I heard Destroy Race and Brew for the first time. I'm like, Jesus, this is unbelievable. But you know what? The thing about Meshuggah is it's crazy, yes, but there's still songs. I get it. And you know what? I can do this. Oh, I yeah. can still groove to it. It can yeah. still move my head to it, right? And uh, I don't know, today in today's day and age, even my drum students, you know, everyone's like, I'll show them something at 60 BPM and I'll be okay. So you, you try it. And they're like, do dit, do dit, do dit. You know, it's like, why do you have to go so fast? <laughs> you know, it's like everyone's obsessed with technicality and speed. And I really get the vibe. I'm not going to call out anyone or anything, but I'm just seeing that so many people have lost that connection to just writing a good song. Cause I'll, I'll go on, uh, and listen to Sirius XM or any radio station or whatever, half the time I, I just get sick of it so fast. Because Riff Salad. I'm, I'm just, yeah, yeah, I'm just looking for, for songs, you know, and it's like, I don't want to say state of being or progressions. Hey, those are, that's how music should be. You know, it's, that's not what I'm saying. But you know what? Our focus was to write the best song we could, not to show off. Yeah. It wasn't for me to do blast beats and the craziest drumming so I could top Planet of the Apes or Jalar or whatever I played with Devin Townsend Project. I had nothing to do with that. You know, my ego was checked at the door. It's like, what is going to be the best song? You know, uh, how can my drums add to that? How can your guitar part add to that? How's the melody going to go? So it, it complements what's going on, you know, and, and that's what I'm a huge fan of. You yeah. know, it's like, I, I love the new Gojira record. I think there's there's great songs. Are they technical? Yes, but you know what? They're not technical the whole way through the record. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, there's there's peaks and valleys. And yeah. I think that's what makes a really strong record, what makes great songs, having those peaks and valleys. But if it's just constant, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, for 10 songs, dude, I, I will get three songs in at best and shut it off. Yeah. yeah, I just you know. Also, do you think like metal kids are marathon runners? Like you play that live, they're gonna be exhausted by song too. As a person that loves a good <laughs> oh. circle pit, when you're playing a like, there's three circle pit songs in a row, I'm getting a beer or a water real quick. Right, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm halfway done. Yeah, you know it's everyone's different, man. Everyone's different, you know. But and uh, again, you know, for the for the tech bands like Animals as Leaders, they're they're another incredible band. But that's a genre of music where it's expected to be that. But if you listen really closely, they're writing great songs. Yeah. They truly are within what people expect from them. And that's why tons of people buy that music because that's what they want to hear with that. You know, but uh, another great example of it, and they started a thing way back in the day too, it's Fear Factory. Sure, oh. they, they got that stuff. Them and Meshuga kind of were at the forefront with, you know, the kick drums matching the guitar parts or the polyrhythmic thing going on or whatever, you know, but Fear Factory is yeah. another band that really brought that to the forefront. And I know it, I know they influenced Devin, you know, it's like, I know they influenced a ton of metal bands today, you know, so like there are the exceptions to it. And it's just my opinion, man. I'm just yeah. staying in opinion here, but what it comes back to is I really get, uh, interested in a band when they're writing great songs where I can listen to it and it's like, oh, that's different. Oh, wow. That's not even technical, but what an incredible song. Oh, they have an acoustic song. Killer. You know, it's like I, I got to nod my uh, hat to Slipknot. Slipknot will do an acoustic song or whatever, and then they'll yeah. come out and they'll do something that's just crazy like Heretic Anthem and rip your face off. You know, it's like they aren't scared to go to different you know, different peaks and valleys throughout their music and just try yeah. new things. And I think that is awesome. You want to know why they're that big? That's why I think they're that big. It's yeah. because they aren't scared to take those chances. That's brilliant. That's smart. You know, they're pushing the envelope. They're, they're pushing their threshold every album they do. They're trying not to repeat themselves. And you know what? There are some bands you can listen to. You're like, oh, they're just rehashing riffs now. Like there's lots of bands out there that I can hear that sometimes. Again, just my opinion, but I don't find Slipknot does that. Yeah, they're, they're, they're always putting out fresh stuff. You know, it's interesting. You know, and without Devin sacrificing Town heaviness either, too, which a lot of people right? love. 
Like they didn't have an yeah. album where it's like, oh yeah, it's just a straight ballad album. It's like, no, you get a ballad <laughs> and then you get a song. Like if the production was shittier, it would be on Iowa. Like literally <laughs> yeah. if the production was worse, it would be at one of their older songs. Like it's that heavy. It's just like they're newer yeah. and it's the 20, like 2021. It's like the song's not going to sound like it was made in 2001. <laughs> it's like, but yeah, it's exactly. the same amount of aggression somehow. It's like, how do these guys are, how they do it? <laughs> Sean just said that the yeah. new album sounds like Iowa. So maybe we'll get that production. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, yeah, I, like, oops, oh, sorry. Uh, it's just going to say Devin Townsend's another obvious example. Like you can go from key to deconstruction <clears throat> to empath to ocean machine. Those are all radically different records, but you know what? It's, it's coming from his soul. It's, it's true. It's what he actually feels. I think that's super cool. Yeah. He pushes on. Well, granted he's, he's in prog rock, progressive metal yeah. or whatever, which is always pushing the boundaries, but I think he even pushes it further. You know, it's like no one would expect half the stuff that he's released. You know, well, he doesn't rest and, on his laurels either, right? Like yeah. he could just kind of sit back and play. He could just he probably couldn't he, he probably wouldn't have to make another song ever again. Like he's got enough of a catalog. <laughs> he can just like we're gonna do this, we're gonna do these two albums now. It's like we're gonna do this album and just do an album a tour for the rest of his life and I don't know, buy mansions. <laughs> like but he's like, nah, I kind of want to create an album every six months somehow. I don't know how I'm gonna do he it. He has three on the way. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So yeah. it's like exactly. So yeah. It's wild. And I agree with the the progressive stuff. Like all the bands that are popular, they all write good songs while, you know, also doing it. Yep. And as a kid that loves technical, I grew up in it. I agree a thousand percent. I love when there's bands I hear that are crazy technical, but they just they bully me out of Spotify. They <laughs> they five eight, seven, seven, eight, like just like change type signature so quickly. They heard, you know, dance of eternity. And they're like, we want to do that like a hundred BPM faster. And then I just get kicked out. I go listen to Creed or something, to, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. <laughs> to decompress. I'm like, Holy crap. How do I even know what happens? Oh, so speak, <laughs> speaking about like how Devin Townsend wrote and did all these different kinds of genres. What was it working with him and writing like those records? Like, were you like, almost intimidated at some times by like what he came up with were you like did you feel free and open like he gave you free reign how was it yeah Devin has a really good mind for drumming <clears throat> so we connected I felt we connected really well with that and I was never really intimidated the only time I was ever intimidated is when I tried out for for the band but I just went in there guns blazing so let's do this you know and, and I got the gig and uh you know, uh, Deconstruction was extremely challenging record. Um, Ziltoid 2, Z2 was very challenging because I had six weeks to learn it. And then it's it's no, not exactly the easiest record either. That's a pretty <laughs> crazy record. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but he did give me a lot of free reign. Z2, I pretty much, he had drum machine parts, but I didn't really have the time to learn it. So I based it very loosely off what he wrote. A couple of the songs I did, I did a lot similar to it, but the majority of it, you know, it's like, I was coming up with a lot of different things. And he just had to trust me because we didn't have a lot of time, you know, and, uh, you know, but uh, for the most part, working with Devin was, it was easy, man. He knew what he wanted. He produced everything. And eventually you just get to know what people want. And I would write my drums in the vein of what I think he would want. And, it would always end up being that and if it wasn't he'd just explain it and i'd do it done you know so it was it was always a, a good experience uh recording albums with them you know and i was always very well prepared very professional always ready to go and always gave them 110 percent every single time oh awesome and i will say with the drumming on topic you did drumio recently correct and you taught yeah, about yeah. odd time signatures and all that good stuff i watched it was an awesome lesson if you couldn't like you yeah. know i'm a drummer so that's why i have drumio <laughs> just some random guy doing yeah. it. love it i love the lesson especially but what i want to know especially because uh well two things one after doing that would you try to become where you trying when you oh my god would you want to go in there more regularly like after that one experience oh yeah you know it's, it's a ton of fun and b uh you know they asked me to come back <laughs> oh so, there you go awesome it was like well, so what's your summer looking like you know and so i guess i made a good impression but uh 
you know, we're going to hopefully try and work on some stuff to get me back in there. But um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a whole different angle of the music industry. And I, I'm a teacher, like, that's what I do for a living when I'm not touring and I teach, like, thank God, I don't rest everything put all my eggs in one basket and into just a band because if that there was a case i'd be looking yeah. working at mcdonald's or something right <laughs> now, you know but i i focused on session work i focused on teaching so when covid hit those two things were i was able to pay my mortgage do everything else and live a happy life still doing music you know, and, uh, you know, when a monolith comes back and we, we go on the road, it's just another added thing to my session work and my teaching. Right. So uh, having something like Drumeo is yet another thing. So to be able to add that to the whole list of other things that I'm doing to, you know, create revenue for myself and to, to make a living is amazing. And, uh, you know, an opportunity like that is, is great for you because, you know, it, it gets you more students. They see you on Drumeo, you know, your social media numbers go up, everything, because it's amazing promotion for yourself, right? Yeah. So, For people who don't know, might not be aware of what Drumeo is, can you just, like, uh, give a brief explanation of what you did on there and what the platform can give? Yeah, like, Drumeo, first of all, is, is just a, a huge online community of drum lessons, and they get you know the best drummers in the world they fly them in from all over the world to go there and teach various lessons and they hired me to go in there and to teach lessons for example I, I teach a lot of my students this book it's called stick control and i think it's the most oh, important book in drumming there we go see yeah. knows what he's talking yeah. about there we go. <laughs> and, and so you know jesse knows uh so like uh <laughs> Anyways, when, when it comes time to learning stick control, for example, Jesse, what's this all about? It's about snare stickings. Drum, right? Yeah, snare drum and stickings. And like yeah. all the basic, the first page, you basically can learn everything you need to learn about drumming from just the first page. Exactly. <laughs> it's nuts. But I, I looked at it differently. And this is how I think about music. This is how I think about anything in my life. Is I looked at it differently. It's like, just wait a second. Whenever I pull a stick control, my drum students would always be like, oh, God, okay. <laughs> you know, they they want to get to learning that new song. They want to get to learning the yeah. new beats. They want to get to learn the new fills. So I said, hey, guys, you know, why don't we do this where we take R, which is your right hand, and L, which is your left hand, and we make R a kick drum, and we make L a snare drum. And then you just play eighth notes on your hi-hats all the time. This is something I came up with. And I said – guess what? Those 24 rudiments on that first page are now 24 beats. And every single one of my students freaked out. And they love it. Because now stick control isn't just about rudiments. So now if I say, okay, grab, grab stick control, they're excited because they don't know if they're getting rudiments or if they're getting new beats, new fills, or all the different platforms and different things that I came up with this, with this book, right? So when I went to Drumeo, they're I taught some VIPs that they have, these Drumeo VIPs. And what they were is every summer and, and fall, they would bring students from all over the world, from the Drumeo community, come in and they would hold a week long VIP camp. Yeah. Wow. And for three or four years in a row, I was a guest teacher there. And I would teach this stuff in the day that I come out there. And, and they're just like, you got to teach this lesson. Man. So that was one of the lessons that I taught. Another one was the time signature exercise I came up with that you saw, Jesse. And, yeah. and you know, it's like, that's my own design again. I came up with that and they said, you got to teach that. So I taught the very, very basic version of that uh, on the live Dromeo feed. And uh, yeah, I think they're releasing that tomorrow, actually, like for, for the whole public to see now. Yeah. Because I was actually wondering one of my other questions about that. Because I was, you know, I've I've always like uh, when I didn't have Drumio, I, I actually I learned how to read basic drum tab uh, from freedrumlessons.com when it Drumio basically what Drumio came from the original, and I always yeah. watched all their like free lessons and stuff as a kid, and I always wondered when people were teaching these lessons, like is there ever a fear? of giving too much or because these concepts, because obviously you teach in your, you know, for your personal, like, you know, that's your income, you know? And yeah. is there ever a fear of teaching too much 
like giving out something for quote unquote for free or is it because these comp these ideas are so complicated you're not worried because they still like you said the basic like a time signature little thing you you did <laughs> where it's like no there's like 75 levels of this like you can get the basic yeah. but you got to come to yeah. to daddy over here to learn the other <laughs> 74 <laughs> levels because this gets crazy you nailed it on the head you know with stick control i just touched on the stuff that i teach there's other stuff that I teach in that book and different ways of doing it. Uh, the time signature was literally the first level of five that I teach. And it usually takes a good month to a month and a half to two months for my students to learn the full exercise. So, you know, it's like, yeah, that does come to mind where I'm like, I can't give away the whole enchilada, you know, yeah, but yeah. at the same time, you know, you want to show people how creative this could actually be. You know what I mean? And um, that gets people interested. So yeah, it, you do have to be mindful because yeah, you don't want to give it away. If you give away your whole curriculum for free, who's going to come to you for lessons? Yeah. You know, so there is, <laughs> you got to be careful about how you teach specific things or, or what you're going to give away for free, uh, you know, online or whatever. Right. But um, you know, I was comfortable with it and, and I think they're pretty, cool exercises very thoughtful and they, they'll work for any beginner intermediate or advanced student can make it as difficult as you want and uh yeah there was a really really warm reception to it on uh Dromeo. so is you know an awesome experience i'm very grateful that i was uh, asked to come there and you know looks like uh i'll be going back sometime soon so uh, nice. i'm looking yeah. forward to it that's yeah. great to hear i mean <laughs> it seems like a really cool thing and um, I know we're narrowing down on time right now, so I would I would be remiss if I didn't ask the random silly question segment. I asked you these yep. last time. We talked about zombie apocalypse, pet peeves, and uh, public transportation. So this time I got three new ones for you. Are you ready? Let's hit it, man. All right. Question number one: What two sports, if you combine them, would be great? <laughs> Hockey and MMA. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a, that's a good one, too. I was thinking hockey and football, and then I was like, it kind of, you still tackle and hit on the ice and stuff like that, but MMA, that'd be, uh, the fights would be a brawl. Like a, well, oh, it'd be hard. insane. Yeah. yeah, there'd be actual <laughs> fatalities. He threw a spinning yeah, head right, kick. Be... Oh, he's got a skate on. He's dead. Anyway, so number five is <laughs> he's just kind of dead, uh, and they scored a goal because he was the goalie, too, so they don't have a goalie now. Uh, they're going to win. <laughs> Dude, you need so many backups. a lot of bro a lot of broken arms or legs too, you know. It's like, oh, he's in the submission. Well, he's he's out for the rest of the season. You know, yeah, yeah. no one's gonna be throwing dirty hits when you have to answer to an MMA fight, <laughs> right? This is like, yeah. Oh my god, that's a great answer. Um, all right, question number two: uh, Would you rather have the taste of mayo in your mouth forever, where every single morning you wake up, you're completely covered in peanut butter, head to toe, slathered all up in peanut butter? I'm going to go with the mayo, man, because uh, I don't know. I, I like peanut butter. but uh, <laughs> That's a nice yeah. bed there. You want it covered in peanut butter every morning? <laughs> like, come on, every morning covered in peanut butter, man? That's going to be a nightmare. That's some pretty sticky stuff, too. You know, the, that's a good one, though, because taste mayo, the mayo all for the rest the time. of the time. It's like you have it all over your tongue. And see, I'm a super healthy guy, so maybe I will resort back to the peanut butter idea because at least it's not going in my body. It's on my body. Okay, I'm going with the peanut butter. I go with the peanut butter. Oh, oh, I can wash that off every morning. I'll just get an endorsement with bed sheets. We're all good. <laughs> all good. Oh, man. Yeah, right? I, I was telling Chris that. I was like, I actually despise mayo. Like, it's literally my top in my top three like worst tastes like smells like when people bring it out i'm like i hate this but then i was just like peanut butter i got a beard i shaved my head and my beard once i don't look good so i can't do it i have to have the beard covered in peanut butter every day i'm like this kind of sucks this would be a little rough yeah. i'm already i'm already late to work i'm always like 10 minutes i'm like i've got to run now i gotta take a <laughs> shower in the morning it's a little rough yeah <laughs> probably clog the drain too all that peanut butter all over you you know <laughs> right <laughs> you totally. need a plumber every day um, yeah. All right, question number three, the final one. If you had the power of Wolverine and instead of claws coming out of your hands, what would you want? What would I want? Yeah, yeah. you can't have claws. Have... You have to have something else. Oh. There we go. Jeez. 
to replace the claws. Yeah, so yeah. Get you have the exact claws. same power, but you can't have claws. That's be something oh, that's, else. That's, that's that's easy, man. Drumstick. Ah, oh, I, called it. <laughs> I called it. If you're ever breaking stick, you're ready. Actually, I came you probably could break it. Go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I drop a stick. Shing. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a legend. Or you just play a mean yeah. marimba solo. You just have like you just have two sticks. You just I could play them all. <laughs> I could play every <laughs> note. Right. Yeah. Oh man, when I came up with that question, I was like, this is gonna be good. And Chris was like, it's gonna be drumsticks. I'm like, I call oh, it. you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, damn it. it yeah. <laughs> if you didn't say it, I'd be shocked. I'm like, wow, what else would he put there? Right. Um, he loves grilling all right, so- a lighter, just a lighter, always to start the grill. Like, wow, that's a very specific <laughs> tool. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the random silly question segment um i feel like we covered so much is there anything else that you want to plug anything else you want to mention before you go yeah just uh progression zp it'll be coming out you know it's not going to be coming out as a full ep right away because we are going to release a bunch of singles first but uh it's coming out you know and and most of all just thanks to you guys thanks to everyone listening and to thanks all t- to the people who follow us worldwide, you know, and uh, we're building, we're still a new band. Sure. We're made up of other known bands, metal bands out there, but we're still fresh. We're still brand new. So we're building this from the ground up. So, you know, it means everything when people are streaming our stuff, when they're, you know, buying the merch, going on the website, buying an album and vinyl uh, touring is going to mean everything to us. You know, that's what's going to break us. Right. So, yep. Um, can't wait to get out there, but the support means everything. So to all the people following us, thank you so much. It means everything to us. And we're very appreciative, uh, very grateful for that. And, uh, very grateful for guys like yourselves, you know, you, uh, both you and Jesse, uh, having me on here again means everything, you know, it's, it's good to get the word out and it's always great chat with you, man. Have a blast. And, uh, but just thanks so much for supporting the music and putting us out there. Oh, it's awesome, man. No, thank you. It was awesome. You yeah. know, you got to talk to Chris, you know, we're just the new podcast and I, you know, I wasn't always like, I, I wasn't always listening to Devin Townsend. I discovered you through Chris and I was like, wow, that guy is an animal. And then he said, we were interviewing you. I'm like, awesome. So thank you for coming on. I appreciate it, man. I can't wait to hear the EP. Yep, man. The yeah, pleasure's all ours. Awesome, and uh, can't wait for you guys to hear. Let me know what you think for sure, guys. Definitely, man. For sure. Well, thank you again, man. And enjoy the rest of your night. You as well, guys. It was a blast. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Oh, my man. (laughs) Talk to you later. And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. Hope you guys enjoyed Ryan with your host, Chris and Jesse. What's up, man? RVP. That's him. That's not me. I was going to say that's me. But yeah, I know. RVP, dude. He was awesome. I'm a huge fan of him drumming wise. Again, like I said in the podcast, you showed me him. I didn't listen to a lot of Devin back in the day. I only really listened to Strapping Young Lad. So going through his catalog and listening to Awesome Drumming and then seeing him on Drumio before this, it was uh, an honor to uh, you know talk to him. You know, the guy's really nice, and he's a freaking legend. And he's dropping a brand new EP with the monolith called Progressions. The uh, release date is not announced yet, but there is a brand new song. Uh, it's Angel and Devil put together. Oh, it is. Oh, I thought it was just evil and and evil. Yeah. All right. I'm an idiot. And and angel and devil. See, there's a reason I have an anime (laughs) flag behind me. Let's just be honest. I don't. (laughs) Uh, I will say very happy that they announced the progressions because I couldn't find it. I'm the one that filled up the information sheet. We're going to do a little BTS behind the scenes. And I was a little worried. I couldn't find it. I was like, I swear to God, if they put this out there and I come out and go, Huh? I mean, what, what were you? It was on every like press release uh, that uh, someone posted online, like a blog. Yeah, I was looking around on the band's website where their information uh, should be, and there was no release date. So I was like, okay, I'm going to say I, this to be announced. But and luckily, there is no release date. So good. Because yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. if we said it to him, when you said it, I was clenching my feet. When you were like, progressions, no release date. And I was like, I was looking at RVP's uh, reaction, like, come on. It was like, and he's like, yeah, absolutely right. I'm like, thank God. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. Because I know, put that I, there, I, I would have been pissed. I'm like, fuck, I messed up. <laughs> no, I noticed with bands too, they, they don't put their press release on their website. And I know like that's kind of like too much info sometimes. And why not? You don't want to spam your website, but there should they be have like a new section. Of course, they're going to do that. Yeah, I was going to say bands should actually have like a section of their website where it is their PRs are 
are there. It's so annoying when you're looking for stuff and you have to resort to like blabbermouth or I hate fucking know, going to social media. It's so hard because it'll be the same post every every time, but one out of five actually has the answer. It'll be like, oh, did you hear a new song or a new song or a new song, or a new song off this EP? You're like, there it is. You're like, God damn it. Yeah. You're like, yeah, no, it was a. Uh, it was, you know it was what websites you should go to metalinsider.net. Yeah. Shout out to them. I write some stuff. I do album reviews. So get ready for that. Coming your way on metalinsider.net. A lot of stuff. I'm yeah. Playing. And I'm going to, and I was going to, yeah. And now we're going to start a podcast where I'm going to attack all the sites right now. So listen here, metal suck. No, <laughs> listen here, sucker. Listen here, Vince, whatever your name is. Come in for their, their stage names or blog names. Was it? But, yeah, uh, um, no, it was awesome. And uh, how'd you like it? You talked to him before. How'd this compare? What would you rank it? Well, it's cool because every time I talk to him, I'm talking about like something new. So like back then, uh, when I first talked to him, a monolith was like brand spanking new, and they had one track out, right? I think it was Hollow back then. Anyway, oh. and then when I talked to him before, they were about to release like you know their debut album. They had all these things planned. Up. Like he was saying, like he had the tour, like he was all ready to go. And I was actually live in studio. When that happened, he called in from Vancouver. But anyway, Vancouver. it was a lot of fun. And this one is interesting because we get to hear the progression. So now doing this the third time, the third interview with him, I get to hear a different side of how he's doing. So everything is different before, you know, before there's different band members, like they had Jed and Byron that were in Strapping on Lad. So like when they were there, it was very early. So they had to like work around that. Like right now with this EP, they actually have a, a, a full style lineup that they've been with for several years. You know, so you get to hear a bunch of that. And plus, I always want to ask him Devin Towns and questions because I love that that band. I love Devin. I love the project. I love everything they did. So it's always curious to see how like the writing process for all that stuff happens. Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, the guy is a bundle of knowledge, a bundle of experience. And, uh, you know, I had to he's a bundle. He's actually a bundle of fun. But uh, no, uh, it would be actually amazing that every time you interviewed him, he's doing worse. You just see a man <laughs> disintegrating in front of your eyes. How's it yeah. going, uh, Ryan RVP? And he's just like, not so good, Chris. Just his house gets dirtier every time until he's interviewing in front of a Starbucks. He's like, I live at, at Starbucks now. He grew out his beard. It's all strangly. Yeah, I'd be like, I'd be like, Dragly. this is wild. You just watch. Oh, but no, um, I'm I'm happy I got to talk about Drumio though, because again, his drumming's awesome. So it's cool to uh Drumio is sick. Check it out, guys. If you have I didn't, yeah, Drumio is sick. I will say, and also if you're actually uh if you're actually what do you call it disciplined, unlike me, you will get a lot of gains out of it. I just watch it for entertainment because I'm an idiot. I did not plan to have this, by the way. I just I think have you it. did. No, I have my I literally I have think my, you knew that he was no, there and I you, had my stand and my practice pad are right next to me. And I was like, Oh yeah, I forgot because this whole shit too is bad. I didn't just pull it out too, but like I should have yeah. imagine you just had a, the, the front page, you printed it out. And you just put it on a magazine to make it look like it. You're like, yeah, I drum too for fun. No big deal. But then, then he would ask me what it was about, and I'd be like, sticks. Yeah, I will say it shows how bad I am under, under pressure. I literally know what stick control is about. And when he asked me, I was like, oh my god, I kind of outed myself as a drummer. And I, <laughs> I, I like, don't ask me questions. I'm really nervous. I don't want to answer questions on it. They're like, what is it? Uh, Star uh, sticking patterns. Uh, snare. Uh, yeah, snare. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Tom in there. Um, yeah, no, he's all he's awesome. And then. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's really cool. Also, I, I could talk about drum stuff all day, so it's actually probably good that I only got to a little bit at the end because we probably couldn't have made that interview. Well, guess what? Jesse's recording drum covers for his YouTube channel. <laughs> Insane. Yeah. Jesse, tell us more about that. <laughs> He'll eventually come out. Uh yeah. Uh, YouTube.com slash C slash Insid one. Uh yeah. I'm uh I just I just kind of quote unquote fixed up, I guess what you'd call my drum studio. Uh, a cat got trapped in my crawl space and decided to go pee in it. So now wow. I can play drums with the lovely smell of ammonia. And it's awesome. So, yeah, hopefully you can't smell it because 4D YouTube doesn't exist yet. So you won't smell piss. But, yeah, knowing when I record my drum cover, laid to rest. 4D is where you can smell, smell like pit. Yeah, 4D is when you can smell and, like, feel it, basically. Well, I still love how, like, Jesse was basically having a Charlie Kelly or Charlie Day experience from Always Sunny. Out of the wall, eh? Okay, now you're talking my language. Yeah, cats I will say, walls. also, I'm... Too bad you didn't throw more cats in there to get the other cats out. Well, actually, weirdly, a cat, when I was trying to get him out, uh, one of the cats got upstairs and ran in the back and was, like, looking around and kept coming back out because the cat... That was the one cat that's not friendly in my house. You know, we have a bunch of cats. 
So also my mom reminded me that dehydration is a thing. I completely forgot because she said, I was like, oh, I'll get start hungry eventually and come out. And she's like, oh, it could dehydrate itself and die. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a lot more dire than I thought. Cause it was like three days in the crossface. Yeah. And, then I, and then I found out the crossfaces are connected. Luckily we got him out. He was pissed though. He was pissed. I got a trap. That little thing, Changa banged, closed on him, and he was pissed. But thank God, fuck that cat. That cat <laughs> got put back where it belongs, and now it's getting fed. And it's weird. It made its life way harder. Its life is so easy. It sleeps on a bed. It craw- goes into the kitchen. It comes back. It sleeps on a bed. It gets fed twice a day. It decided to go into a crawl space and sit there for four days. No food. No water. And it just sat in dark and dustiness by insulation for four days. It was like, are you an idiot? Like, I get their animals and they don't think like us. Yeah. But what a moron. And now it's like back with all the other cats. It's like, this is nice and healthy now. No, I hope so. I was like, I couldn't touch (laughs) it at first because it just ran away from me. So I was like, I can't check if you're going to jump on you. Yeah, it's going to fuck me up, dude. When I got out of that trap, it was no bueno. But yeah, so yeah, that uh, I switched my name, Jesse underscore Tijan, T-I-E-T-J-E-N. That's my uh, social medias. You can probably catch them below, Chris, if you actually care about your friend. Put my social medias in the uh, the description. And Chris, uh, weirdly, it seems like this uh, podcast name is from it originally from a radio show. Do you have a radio show by any chance? 90.3 WMSC. Yes, Up I have a show with him. Tuesdays, 710 Eastern Time, because we're based in New Jersey. And uh, yeah, the shows might go live soon, live back in studio because right now they're all pre-recorded because of COVID killed the station. But anyway, Tuesday nights, it re-airs on Saturday as well at two o'clock. So you can hear that. And uh, I also post all the interviews I have on the show because the show is basically all music and interviews. So if you want to hear music and interviews, tune into my show. If you just want to hear the interviews, you can go to my YouTube channel. I have interviews with I Hate God um august burns red mouth for war that she was actually on this one wolf hoffman of accept big names on the show oh wow this is funny you just take out i have bands like and you just go i hate god now anyways that was the uh, <laughs> that was the metal teddy bear experience podcast how mad all of you i just hate god now anyways have a nice day uh, and always remember before we go we want to say like subscribe do all that stuff comment yeah. Apple podcast reviews, obviously we'll read. If you have questions, go do the Apple podcast. We'll read them off. You know, if you have questions uh, for us, I'm pretty sure Chris, you have an email for the YouTube. I'm assuming metal teddy bear experience at Gmail. Boom. That social media is both of ours. Go comment on the post. We released the, uh, we do social media posts every Thursday when we release new episodes, leave comments about what you like, hell, what you hate. If you hate my face and tell me help me to shut up, hey. do that attack me dude you think i'm scared of you i got one piece jolly roger behind me in a in a periphery playstation shirt on i ain't fucking around but yeah if you got things to say go to our social media go to our youtube let us know also on all podcast platforms if you don't want to see our ugly faces boom say i'm taking your job <laughs> dude i'm taking your job i'm and taking and that's where we end so guys until <laughs> next time keep it real 